And so one question in the room might be, you know, all of this is cool, but how do you guys handle textual OD since there's no concept of shading quad with ray tracing? Um, and as, you know, most people here know, like in the modern GPU, this technique, like texture LOD relies on partial derivatives that you get from the shading quad. That's how you choose texture LOD based, it's either automatic or manually, uh, but the partial derivatives come from there. And so, again, with ray tracing, you don't have any shading quads, so traditionally this is handled with ray differentials, but the thing is computing ray differential requires uh, differentiating all the elements in the equation for virtual offset rays on triangle plane and storing this data in the payload, and obviously that's not free, like especially over time for subsequent rays. And so an alternative is to always sample MIB0 and do more samples, samples, but that leads to aliasing and additional performance costs. And so together with Aaron's team and Thomas Akinin Muller at, uh, at the group in Sweden, we developed a textual technique for real-time ray tracing. Um, briefly, the heuristic is based on triangle properties, a curvature estimate, distance, and the incident angle. And what's really cool is that we get similar quality to ray differentials, and we only store a single value in the payload for subsequent rays. And we don't have enough time today to cover this, but I ex expect an upcoming publication uh, on this topic. But yeah, you have to do a heuristic for now. Do you want to do the demo, or do you want to? Can, can summarize. Okay, cool. Uh, first. cool. But the demo seems to be working. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, just to summarize a little bit of the work that we've been doing. So we see, well, this is just the beginning. The APIs just came out, the implementations are very early, uh, but we do feel this is a really important tool uh, for us going forward, and I think for the industry going forward also. Uh, and I want to stress the importance also of just having a unified API around it where we can do compute, uh, raster, uh, and ray tracing as well as interacting with memory and multiple GPUs and all that. That's, that makes it significantly easier. We could have done some of this work before with, well, let's say with optics or with our own uh, tracing or something like that, but this makes it so much easier to, to work with and integrate and, and move things between different passes and stuff like that without any interop uh, costs. Uh, and the biggest uh, learning here, uh, we, we just presented a couple of different techniques that we have, and we spend most of the time just explaining how they work. It, is, it uh, takes a little bit of time. But uh, um, it's actually the, a big thing is uh, just of how it's fairly complex of just the trade-offs between various techniques of like, do you want, uh, how much noise can you accept? It depends on your scene. Uh, uh, how about ghosting? How much moving stuff do you have? What's the performance you have, the target in there? And yes, many of these things are fairly expensive, uh, but it's really interesting how you can do these trade-offs. And this scene was mostly opaque, but we're looking at more complex scenes going forward also. And uh, I do think we hopefully showed that you can get to super high quality visuals or even cinematic visuals by combining and being fairly pro pro pragmatic about that. Uh, but there's a lot more stuff for us to explore, uh, and especially when you go delve deeper into more sparse rendering and sort of adaptively uh, distribute uh, ray tracing across the frame where it makes the most, uh, well, has the biggest impact, essentially. We worked with a bunch of people at Microsoft and, and NVIDIA, it was a super awesome collaboration. And um, uh, yeah, lots of references to, our, to his work. And we're hiring also, surprisingly. Um, uh, so, before questions, let's try and see if the live demo works now. There was a bit of a setup incorrectly with the Windows output. Yes, it works. Uh, so, uh, here we actually have our, the yellow dudes are, uh, I'm not sure if they're dudes, the yellow toys thing, agents, things. Uh, they are uh, running with these neural networks and they try and run around to repair uh, these machines. Uh, so, th there's nothing really programmed here except we gave them some rewards for different type of behaviors. Uh, oh yeah, and Colin, if you activate the agent view uh, also in the top there. So you can see the, this sort of semantic view that we're giving them that we rasterize. So this is what they see. This is the only information that they have. Uh, and uh, sometimes they can look pretty smart and sometimes they get a bit confused. And, and the icon be, uh, above them is sort of what's, what they're thinking. And we're doing that by estimating what the neural network is, uh, is sort of predicting. If it's predicting success but it gets uh, dis uh, disappointment, it gets angry, uh, which is kind of cute. Uh, uh, and if we look at some of the, a uh, little bit closer on some of the uh, uh, rendering stuff. So, no, not there. <laughs> okay, then uh, we'll, we'll take questions while Colin uh, <laughs> tries to not uh, set up the build. <laughs> oh yeah, Seb, you should come up also in case there are questions, uh, questions for both talks. 
Yeah, we're starting up. Yeah, this is uh, really great stuff. I'm Calvin from Crystal Dynamics. I'm just wondering uh, for the ray trace reflections, are you guys doing redoing direct lighting and for every single in the hit shader? And then it's like, I guess you're evaluating another light path there somehow. And is that actually efficient? Um, it's possible, and we have to do it. And yes, it can be expensive. Uh, but yeah, we're doing a shadow ray uh, in, in the reflections there also. And if you had lots of light sources, obviously that would be expensive also. Right. Uh, you could cache may maybe lighting in other type of spaces. So that, I didn't mention that in the summary, but one of the things we're looking forward to is figure out what are different type of spaces we can cache information in for different type of techniques. Reflections don't need to be mirror-like necessarily right. in most of the areas. And actually, most of our, one, one, some of the things we really like in this scene is when we have this little more subtle reflections, uh, when, we're, when an object is just nearby it and, and you get this fairly rough reflection of something and everything just sort of fits in. But yes, you're right. You have to calculate lighting somehow uh, for your reflections also. Yeah, it's working, so it's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you, Johan. Uh, fantastic presentation. I believe about three years ago in ZIGGRAPH, like, there was the presentation on problems in real-time rendering. So back then I mentioned LBVHs, BVHs, and it drew a bit of laughter in the crowd. So here we are three years later, and BVHs and uh, path tracing. Uh, what do you think about voxels? <laughs> uh, we like voxels also. Um, uh, and I think, like for example, you saw the the circles where we're caching information. That's good when you have uh, when you have specific uh, when you have specific clear surf surface surfaces where you can put circles on them. Uh, but if you have more volumetric phenomena uh, or you have geometry in a distance, it becomes more of a volumetric thing in that sense. And then voxels is like one of the only pre-filtered geometry representations that we have. Uh, so we are interested in exploring that as well uh, for, for various type of things. And ultimately, you may have particles in this environment or other things and ray tracing everything. That's more of an accurate uh, technique, uh, but, you, but it's extremely slow to do more uh, softer type of uh, phenomena, phenomena in it. So yeah, we like voxels also, but we haven't really worked with it that much in this specific uh, experiment, at least. And also in terms of uh, dynamic updates, I mean, like recompiling BVHs versus just like you know the hardware rasterizer, yeah. you know, the usual. Yeah. So building a BVH is uh, it's not too expensive in this demo, but uh, we actually don't even know how much geometry we have in the scene, and we don't have any LODs, but it runs pretty well. And if it's not the bottleneck, uh, we'll figure out how many triangles we have in the scene. Uh, but uh, that's a big area of research also, and. There's, uh, in DXR, there's two ways of sort of rebuilding the BVH. You can do the loose refit, and that in some of our experiments is um, uh, it's like 10 times faster, um, but uh, it's still early days in this to so see what the performance is. Uh, and at least this also gives tools for, for, the, for the IHVs, and given these workloads and other workloads from other game developers to, to like take them and see how we're using or misusing their current hardware uh, and how they can, how they can evolve and, and uh, what are the actual bottlenecks uh, in this, because it's, it's news for all of us, essentially, in this type of context, at least, a re full real-time context. Thanks again. No problem. Hi. Uh, so I was wondering whether this uh, technology, I haven't actually looked at the API yet, uh, in detail, but is it um, tied to triangles, or can I ray trace something other than tri like sine distance field or something like that? Um, so it's, it, it has a specific path for triangles and how it builds BVH for it, but you can do custom intersections also, where you just define bounding volumes around anything. So if that's around NURBS or, or yeah, whatever type of representation you want to have, you could do that. Uh, we, that's something we wanted to explore here, especially as there's a lot of smooth surfaces, but we just threw triangles at it in, in this demo. But uh, I think you can actually probably do quite a lot of with it, but there will be different performance uh, constraints with that also, but to build a BVH with other type of representations inside it, essentially, instead of just triangles. Thanks. Yeah. Right. Uh, there used to be a problem uh, with coherency with the rays, uh, and there was a lot of work done on, on to, to, to make, I don't know, ray, ray trace in packets or something, and as far as I saw uh, the, the pseudocode, it looked like you only add a ray and then you just don't care about it. So is there anything you can do to make it more efficient in a sense that, let's say, rays that will go through the same part of the structure would not cache pollute each other or something? Yeah. Um, so at least with DXR, the, this specific API, it's a fairly high-level API. Uh, so that's the hardware vendor's problems. Uh, 
um, which is good for us to a degree. Uh, so I think it's, like, it's an interesting point because it's a good, we, we believe it's a good way to start, uh, to get rolling in this sense and start getting workloads. But ultimately we sort of want the more programmable components that we can perhaps use ourselves either for our own ray tracing or specialized uh, things uh, or for, uh, how do you say it, uh, well, other types of techniques in, within compute. There's a lot of useful stuff here uh, that uh, the, the, the hardware architects and, and the software people in the, with, the work with the hardware guys uh, have to sort of build on top of this to, uh, to take these workloads. But yes, in the programming model, you don't care about coherency. That's, uh, that's others' problems, <laughs> essentially. Uh, and you can see fairly variable performance if your arrays are very incoherent and things like that also. Maybe last question. Do you think KD trees are dead? <laughs> or can you use uh, like a custom acceleration structure? You have to rely on what uh, DDXR uh, has on um, an underlying structure. So the acceleration structures are kind of an opaque blob, so the IHVs are free to do whatever they want, how they want to optimize it. Um, so, you know, in the future we might see some really clever papers coming out of how to do this. I mean, uh, you know, there's been papers on how to do, build uh, um, ABBs on, on GPUs and stuff like that, and, and so we'll see. But it's free to the IHV to do whatever yeah. is, makes sense for their hardware. And when we've been talking to them, they sort of want that freedom to be able to explore and, and try, try different type of techniques and, or various optimizations and this trade-off between performance and, uh, yeah. uh, and accuracy uh, in that.